Hello everyone, welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Anna, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mikhail Bates, the Regulatory Manager of FE Fund Info. Welcome, Mikhail. Hi, Anna, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Um, so before we get started with our discussion today, Mikhail, would you like to say a couple of words about yourself and about your work and about FE Fund Info? Hi, Anna. Uh, I'm Mikhail Bates. I'm the Regulatory Manager at FE Fund Info. We're a global data and technology provider to the financial service industry. And my particular role is to keep track of regulations um, in the UK, EU and beyond and make sure that our clients uh, are aware of what requirement, what they need to do. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, so today, Miguel, we wanted to talk about divergence and the future of the UK's answer to sustainability. Really important topic. Um, so my first question for you is, what is the UK's answer to the EU SFDR? Okay, uh, to answer that, and I first like to take, take a step back, really, and look at what the SFDR is. Now, um, what has become known as the the SFDR actually consists of two regulations that are linked. First of all, the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation itself, and also the Taxonomy Regulation. And I think most people are becoming familiar with what a taxonomy is by now, if they weren't already aware. And the EU's ESG taxonomy is a classification system that sets out which economic activities are classed as sustainable based on six environmental objectives. The first two of these, climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation, are already live, while the other four, which are protection of water and marine resources, transition to a circular economy, pollution prevention and control, and restoration of biodiversity and ecosystems, are due to be included in disclosure from next January. And then we have the SFDR itself, which wasn't actually intended to be a classification system, but it sets out the disclosure requirements for financial companies, advisors, and financial products, depending on how green those products claim to be. And as a result, it's actually turned out into a de facto classification system because everyone has now seen references to Article 6, 8, and 9 products. But for anyone who isn't sure of the precise differences, Article 8 products claim some environmental or social characteristics. So they might be branded as green or sustainable or have a screening or exclusion policy. Article 9 products have sustainable investment as an objective. So this includes things like impact funds. And Article 6 products are the rest. In other words, not marketed as green or sustainable although as far as the SFDR is concerned, they may still take sustainability risks into account. Now, I won't go into the minutiae of all the disclosure requirements as they depend on whether you're a product provider or an advisor, whether the product is Article 6, 8 or 9 and so on. Um, and also there are several deadlines, principally because the SFDR came into force last year without any level two technical standards to provide the detailed prescriptions and reporting templates. But there are some important dates everyone needs to be aware of. The first high level entity and product level website disclosures kicked in on 10th of March last year. That's the, that's the key starting date for SFDR. And companies with more than 500 staff then had to start publishing their policies on principal adverse impacts at the company level from the 30th of June last year. Pre-contractual and periodic disclosures for Article 8 and 9 products in respect of the first two objectives in the taxonomy have been required since the start of this year. And then the other four objectives and use of the templates set out in the level two technical standards are due to join them at the beginning of 2023. So that's the EU side of things. That's, that's the, the base level, if you like. And now, although the UK rules haven't yet all been finalized, there have been probably three important documents published here so far. And this is the, the UK version of the SFDR, if you like. The first of these documents was the Treasury's Roadmap Toward Mandatory Climate-Related Disclosures, which is published at the end of 2020, and set out a phased approach for listed companies, banks, insurance companies, asset managers, and pension schemes to report their alignment with the recommendations of the Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, TCFD, starting with the largest companies and eventually covering most, of the, pretty much the whole market. Then last summer, the FCA built on the Treasury's roadmap by publishing its consultation paper on TCFD aligned disclosures for asset managers and asset owners, which are essentially insurance companies and pension funds. And that said, its aim was to increase transparency 
and enable clients and consumers to make considered choices with entity and product level disclosures for all firms with over £5 billion worth of assets. And finally, the third document, towards the end of last year, the FCA published its discussion paper on sustainability disclosure requirements and, and product labelling, which took this a step further, focusing on its commitment to transparency and consumer trust in ESG disclosures. So this document was known as the SDR, um, and as SDR, it sums up to me the approach taken by the UK, i.e. it sounds almost the same as the SFDR and has similar goals and disclosure and product classification, but isn't quite the same when you look more closely. So how does the UK SDR differ from the EU SFDR? Well, probably the most fundamental difference between the UK and the EU rules actually doesn't affect the disclosures themselves because it's the intentionality. The EU's stated aim has been to redirect capital into sustainable investments, while the FCA's rules are concerned primarily with providing decision-useful information to investors who want to consider sustainability in their investments and to improve transparency. But of course, both the UK and EU also say they expect their rules to combat greenwashing. Now, interestingly, even last year's FCA consultation on TCFD aligned disclosures didn't mention anything about redirecting capital to sustainable investment among its three targeted outcomes. What it was after were better outcomes for investors through greater transparency, deeper consideration of climate related risks and opportunities by the investing firms, and more coordinated information flow along the value chain. Now, the SDR covers entity and product level disclosures in three ways. First, there would be reasonably high level key information disclosures for retail investors, and then more granular, granular disclosures for institutional and sophisticated investors. And all of this disclosure would be supported by a product labeling system that shows how far along the spectrum a fund sits from traditional at one end to an impact fund at the other end. But unlike the European eco labels, some of which have been around for years, these labels in the UK would apply to all investment products, not just those looking to promote their ESG credentials, because the spectrum includes products with no ESG characteristics at all at the traditional end. Now, fortunately, the FCA has brought together a group of industry practitioners for what it calls its Disclosure and Labeling Advisory Group, or DLAG, because the initial labeling proposals in the SDR included things like identifying those products that invest in companies that are transitioning to taxonomy alignment, which not only us, but we and others felt needed quite a bit of reworking to make them meaningful and user-friendly. And of course, the taxonomy they would need to align with wouldn't be the EU taxonomy, but would be a UK green taxonomy, which doesn't even exist yet. Um, as we know, what we know is that it, it will be based on the EU taxonomy, but it won't be identical to it. And a concern I have is that a proliferation of taxonomies, different definitions of what economic activities are deemed to be sustainable in different countries, could definitely make things challenging for asset managers. It definitely sounds um, like it's a challenging environment to navigate. Um, I did want to ask, what do UK asset managers need to do to ensure compliance? And what are the deadlines? Okay, well, the good news for the UK, if you can call it that, is that none of the SFDR or taxonomy requirements in the EU came into effect until after the UK got Brexit done. So the UK has gone its own way and has some very different requirements. As I've already said, the UK has adopted the TCFD recommendations as the disclosure benchmark. Larger asset managers, those with over 50 billion pounds on a management, have needed to start considering their TCFD alignment, greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint since the start of this year, with a view to reporting on them by the middle of next year. But it was only at the beginning of April that it became a legal requirement for the largest UK listed or private companies to provide the data themselves. So asset managers, Will have struggled a bit up to now, at least. Um, and that's before we start worrying about disclosures by non UK companies. Smaller asset managers, down to those with £5 billion under management, will be brought into the net from the start of next year, producing their first reports a year after that. So hopefully by that time, corporate disclosures will be a bit more forthcoming. 
Now, the SDR discussion paper also introduced a plan to replace the TCFD recommendations with the recently established ISSB, International Sustainability Standards Board's corporate reporting standards as the baseline when they're fully adopted, as they'll cover much more than just climate-related disclosures. Now, the ISSB was set up by the IFRS Foundation, so there's an awful lot of abbreviations here, at the end of last year to coincide with COP26, and is at the moment currently consulting on its first two sets of standards, and the plan is for them to be in place by the end of this year. So it might not be too far away yet. But in terms of product labels, we'll have to wait and see what the DLAG can persuade the FCA to come up with. But the plan was for a consultation paper on the FCA's proposals to be published sometime in Q2 this year, and then uh, application sometime in the future. And what do UK distributors need to do? Um, do the deadlines align? Well, in the SDR discussion paper, <clears throat> the FCA acknowledged the important role played by advisors and distributors in getting the disclosures from the companies and funds to the end investors, but said it would revisit the proposals for advisors in due course. So they parked that at the moment, basically. It did give a hint, however, about what it might entail. As the DP said, its aim was to ensure advisors take sustainability matters into account in the advice process and to understand investors' sustainability preferences to ensure suitability, which is very similar to what the European distributors need to do from August this year under changes coming in under MIFID II. But as things stand right now, there is no firm date when UK advisors and distributors need to start taking clients' sustainability preferences into account. Well, from our own research with advisors, it does seem that these conversations are becoming a bit more frequent, even if they're not mandated. So maybe by the time they're required, they'll be a standard part of the client journey anyway. Thank you very much, Mikhail, for that overview today. It's been really uh, a great pleasure speaking with you and um, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Anna.